Hello there guys and girls and everything that's in between and welcome to game number two of round number two of the Riot Open Tournament for Total War Rome 2. This is Greek Rackless versus the one and the only Prussian Prince, a very good friend of mine. Again, big thanks to Prince for sending me these uh, after action replays so I can make um, uh, some, uh, some content for you guys. So uh, Prince is using Carthage today and he's facing Greek Heraclus' Syracuse. Um, one thing that I've noticed uh, just before we get into the build uh, analysis here, and I'm going to put this on slow-mo again, is that the Prince is bringing sword uh, units and he's basically counter-building uh, heavy uh, hoplite factions and we're going to see how this plays out in, in this battle. Uh, on his left flank he's got two units of late Libyan hoplites. These are, I mean, some of the best medium hoplite units in the game really for me 30 bonus versus large make these guys a calf killing machine he's put them on the flanks where they should be and look at this he supported them by one libyan piltist and one mercenary scutari this is just a really really great flanking um, uh, element from the prussian prince really like the kind of multi-layered and a multi-purpose use of his flanking force and then way there at the back he's got one unit of mercenary scutari cab the scutari cab and the scutari uh, infantry are okay units. I mean, uh, stats. Speaking just of stats, they're they're not marvelous, but again, it's the variety in this flanking force that gives it its power. And the prince has done that uh, on both flanks. He's got two mercenaries, guitars actually on his flank. His general is a just a normal general's bodyguard from Carthage, and his main infantry line is really one, two, three. Uh, mercenary Samnites, and then he's got four Libyan infantry. Libyan infantry are just fantastic, again, for the price, and the mercenary Samnites are just terrifying, really. Terrifying units in terms of how much damage they do to basically anything they tangle with. They might not win against some of the more elite infantry troops, but they can definitely leave a dent on anything that they face. Uh, moving on to Greek Heraclus' army, he's brought something very similar to the last battle, uh, that we saw him in where he brought Athens, but this time he's brought some skirmish. He's got two Hippias Lancers again on each flank. Uh, let's see if he can use them as effectively, at least some of them, as uh, the last battle in terms of the kills. He did some really nice cycle charging. Two units of mercenary Balearic Slingers. Again, I don't know why the decision of Balearic Slingers over Archers here is justified, but uh, he does it again. Maybe when you bring less of them, you, wanna, you want them to have more ammo so they can be firing in a, for a more prolonged period of time. I don't know. Maybe he can tell me if he watches these videos. And then again, he's brought a Thorax Hoplite line with his a general as one of them, and even mixed in some Militia Hoplites, so... And we do see one Tarantine Cav, so again... From any kind of, not just a caster's perspective, from any player's perspective, when you see Carthage versus Syracuse, you know for a fact that Syracuse is gonna bring lots of strong spears, or lots of decent spears, and they're gonna be very numerous. And I feel the Prussian Prince has kind of figured that that's going to happen and brought a really powerful counter build yet again. You can see his main line is well equipped to dealing with these hoplites even in a head-on fight. And then his flanks are just really, really great. It's just going to come down to how he uses them. Uh, but Greek Heraclus is not a player to be uh, underestimated. He is uh, definitely skilled in this game, plays a lot of Rome too, and takes part in lots of tournaments, so he understands the meta of this game. Finally, we go into real-time speed. You can see that both armies are advancing towards each other. Uh, the Prussian Prince aligning himself nicely with this tree line. I don't know if he'll actually remain in this tree line, or if he just wants to uh, uh, kind of come towards the side here and uh, engage the units of Greek Heraclius, who's doing a good job in maintaining uh, uh, his lines uh, just overall. And you can see he wants to kind of uh, overwhelm and envelop the troops of the Prussian Prince who started to get very, very aggressive here, pushing with one of his flanks uh, and uh, his center. And you can see this Tarantine Cav coming right for the general. And these guys can do lots of damage if they are left um, on their own to kind of uh, hit the general of the Prussian Prince. That's some decent HP damage here, but it's going to get chased off by a mercenary uh, Skutari. Prussian Prince has got lots of cab again, but uh, this is, uh, you can see here the um, that Greek Heraclus hasn't really done the same mistake that he has before, where he's using his cab uh, prematurely. Here goes the uh, uh, initial fights, you can see some of these Libyan infantry are starting to um, uh, take some, uh, some damage to them, uh, but overall they're going to start winning the fight against these hoplites uh, just in a little bit. They're going to definitely 
um, stabilize. And uh, again, the mercenaries do have less morale than you'd like. So they are, uh, at the moment, um, steadying. Steady instead of eager. So the fight is going on on the main line, and you can see here that the Prussian Prince is using his flank, his right flank, very aggressively. He's keeping his left flank uh, kind of stationary, and he's caught the Tarentine Cav over there at the back. I would say, um, given that the uh, given that Greek Heracles has a sort of a Cav advantage in terms of just Cav versus Cav, really, um, this is kind of good for um, kind of good for uh, for him that he's drawn one of them away here. But you can see he's not using his Cav at all. Like his Cav is just sitting in his back lines now. They should be trying to get flanking maneuvers. The Prussian Prince, this is exactly the type of battle, the type of fight he wants to take. These uh, these hoplites are going to be holding for a pretty long time, but the Prince has way more units, uh, and he's going to be able to circle and encircle this line. Very quickly, you can see the Peltas already raking in some kills, 27 and 6 on each flank, and now comes some cab, but this cab is going to be used ineffectively, charging into the rear of his own troops, trying to chase away this uh, Skutari cab. So again, the Prussian Prince being very, very proactive, and he's uh, surprisingly going to start to lose this fight here in the middle. I think this might be a unit that got targeted by these, uh, oh, he has three mercenary Balearic Slingers, and they've got about, um, what, uh, 40... 60 kills uh, between them, so they probably got some kills on the, uh, uh, these uh, units here, on these Samnites, but uh, you can see Libyan infantry doing a good job here on this side. Um, they're starting to stabilize here in the middle, and here goes the shield wall by the Prussian Prince. He's trying to prolong his units as soon as, uh, as soon, as long as possible, and uh, he's going to try to uh, pincer and uh, just use a very, very classic uh, flanking maneuver. He's going to flank on the uh, on this wing uh, of Greek Heracles' army and try to roll up the line. Uh, but you can see that uh, actually, to my surprise, these Thorax Hoblites actually did really, really well against um, some of these uh, uh, swords troops or some of these sword units, and maybe maybe the Slingers had something to do with it. The Prussian Prince actually now uses two of his uh, late Libyan Hoplite units to push away these Slingers and these Cav, and I think he wants to give time for his army to do its job. It's doing a decent job. Uh, on each flank, and you can see that these units over here are going to quickly get isolated. Greek Heracles should be sending units to the to the uh, to the left and to the right, but you can see the Prussian prince uh, using very very thin lines uh, against uh, these Hippias lancers, and uh, he's actually going to lose a good bit of men in that charge. But they're definitely not going to be able to go through them. And again, the purpose of this maneuver over here, pushing the cav away is to allow for things like this to happen. You can see he's targeting the general of Greek Heracles is going to come down to 51 men, 50 men now. It's gotten 82 kills against these Libyan infantry and um, it uh, definitely fought and held uh, its own, but sword units are not, like they're not super strong against hoplites, but at the same time, they can fight them one to one. Like when Emperor Edition first came out, people were sort of thinking that hoplites were kind of overpowered or that they were uh, these, you know, elite killing machines. It might be true for some, like, really tough uh, uh, spear units like Triarii or maybe uh, some of the Spartan elite troops, but you can see with one more sword unit, you can actually flank and get devastating uh, effects against uh, uh, a player who just brings hoplites. 261 kills on this mercenary Scutari by the Prussian Prince. Just really, really good display. Uh, shows real maturity, I feel, when he's dealing with the builds and uh, the factions. And it's going to turn uh, turn into, again, what game one was. He's just uh, chasing these cav units here. Uh, but I don't know, it might not... Nah, it's, it looks pretty over, doesn't it, for Greek Heracles. He's basically lost all of his infantry. He's trying to use Zipaeus Lancers as effectively as possible. You can see they've gotten lots of kills again. Uh, while he's retreating, he just charges units that are uh, moving. And you know, some people underestimate uh, the importance of bracing, and uh, I think it's uh, it, it, Greek Heracles here showed us how um, how bracing is something that could be very important. While the Prussian Prince is chasing, he just turns around, finds an isolated unit, and just slams into it. Gets like 20, 30 kills with a with a single charge. See, he's doing he's doing the same here against this one unit, and this is a late Libyan hoplite. They've got a 30 bonus versus Cav, but see, they they still lose men rather quickly when they get charged on the move. 
But again, for the Prussian Prince, um, these are not necessarily cost-effective trades right now, but uh, he doesn't care. He's got way more troops than Greek Heraclius remaining, so he can actually do these uh, kind of not very cost-effective trades, and uh, he can get away with it. He's got tons of more troops, and he's going to get into these slingers, and if he really gets into these slingers and kind of gets them uh, uh, going into a route, this game will be, like, officially over. So again, decent kills on the cab of uh, Greek Heraclius. Even his, his his slingers got lots of kills this game also. But let's take a look at the Prussian Prince. 76 kills with the Libyan Peltas is just phenomenal. 158 on these mercenary Scutari. Uh, these mercenary Samnites, 83 is okay. 57 on the Libyan infantry, which is kind of like the weakest infantry troop he's brought. But again, 50, 70, 60, uh, 82... 267 on this mercenary Scutari. Wow. I guess that melee attack and weapon damage really uh, factor in. But here's the last kind of bit of uh, fighting that's going on. We'll get a chance to um, talk about the stats uh, a little bit towards the end. So again, for both of these battles, uh, I think a good thing to take away would be um, just understanding the builds, understanding the types of armies that the faction would bring. Greek Heraclius really was very traditional with his uh, army picks. He brought something that was very see-through, I think, but again, maybe the factions that he picked, Syracuse and Athens, they're both very predictable factions. They don't really have as many tools in their disposal as the uh, as the factions that the Prussian Prince brought uh, do. He brought Carthage and Rome, both very, very versatile factions that can field strong sword infantry, decent cavalry, great skirmishing, and uh, good spear units also in the form of Triarii and the late Libyan hoplites that we saw here. Uh, or the late Carthaginian hoplite, sorry, that we saw here by the Prussian Prince. So again, he's just chasing him away. Uh, Greek Heraclius, I guess, just trying to get as many uh, kills as possible here with his uh, mercenary Balearics. Uh, but they're going to get closed down by this one unit of mercenary Sutari, who's got risen up to 319 kills. That's going to be that. Game number two for you guys. You can see that the Prussian Prince in both battles had more men had better builds, read the maps and the factions, just overall better. Look at these mercenary Scutaris, just absolutely insane. 319 kills and 158 kills on them. His late Libyan hoplites did a good job. His um, his Libyan infantry overall, I mean, they do, they were fighting thorax hoplites, uh, so they were going to lose that fight, but they were able to, you know, get in there, get stuck in, do lots of damage. And uh, the Peltas also. Decent kills. Looks like there was one Carthaginian cav here as opposed to um, four mercenary Scutaris. But um, Greek Heraclius shows good use of cav. Uh, but I, I would say that in this match, uh, in these two games that we saw here today, the Prussian Prince uh, definitely won the build war. And I think he also played better there in the second match like, significantly in terms of micro. But hard luck to Greek Heraclius. Good games to both players. I hope you guys enjoyed this this matchup here today please do leave a like and a comment uh, tell me what you thought maybe you have a, a remark about the builds maybe I said something that you know isn't exactly uh, accurate or um, you know I'm not not perfect so hit me up with your comments let me know uh, what's going uh, on in your heads and again sorry for the lack of videos guys but hopefully within uh, hopefully by next weekend when work kind of dies down a little bit I'll be able to create more videos for all of you. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you all next time.